So this started out as such a simple idea. How could I get two pieces of acrylic to glue together with minimal displacement in between, minimal, you know, messy glue, things like that. Most of the time I will use 3M tape. I'll put that on the bottom of whatever piece I'm working with and then cut that out on the laser. It'll be perfectly matched and the two will glue together, no problem. Not such a great solution if you're wanting to do something clear. And of course, it's an additional step. But that was before I stumbled upon something called acrylic welding. I absolutely have to give kudos here to my original source, and that is the acrylic shop, Houston Acrylic. Houston Acrylic has been one of the places where I will sometimes order acrylic. They have every color you could possibly imagine, including all sorts of awesome prints. And for the record, they didn't sponsor this video. This is me just giving you guys a tip to a great source, small business, totally worth shopping from them. And on their Instagram feed a couple weeks ago, they showed how to weld two pieces of acrylic together. And it was absolutely mind blowing. Not just me, but everybody in the comments was like, oh my God, I didn't know that you could do that. And so of course, the first thing I did was immediately get up out of bed because I was doom scrolling late at night like we all do and ran to try this. And sure enough, two pieces of clear acrylic laid on top of each other, completely fused together, not a single drop of glue in sight. And I got to thinking, what else could I weld together? Hi guys, my name is Sarah and this is my studio. So today I wanna show you guys this huge experiment I did with acrylic welding. I ordered Houston Acrylics matte pastel pack along with a couple sheets of their holographic stars acrylic and set up a test to determine if not only could I weld acrylic successfully, with an engraved design, but could I then turn this on its head, put the engraving inside, fill the engraving? Could I fill the engraving with paint? Could I fill it with resin? Could I even stick a sticker or a piece of paper in between and still get this acrylic weld, this fusing of two pieces of acrylic? Well, today I'm gonna to show you my experiment and the results.
So now we have all of my little sample experiments ready, done, cut. So now the real test. Do they actually stay together? So the first test was just testing the two pieces of acrylic to make sure that they would actually fuse together. I did engrave the holographic acrylic prior to cutting the two together to see if they would weld, but it shouldn't have played any role because the bond surface between the two of them was completely flat. This is how it turned out. And now if I try, yeah, yeah, no, this is stuck. So the method works. So then we started playing around a little bit with it and we started engraving and then flipping it so that the engraving was on the inside between the two pieces to see if potentially you could maybe sort of, I don't know, create sort of a seal space or if you wanted to enclose an engraving. So this is what we did with the first one, which was where we engraved uh, the holographic material and then put the two together. And with this one, Okay, so with this one, I have an area where it didn't fuse completely on the side and I can get my nails in there. However, the vast majority of it did go ahead and weld completely together. So I can't really get the two separate, but that being said, there is space on one side. So my guess is perhaps maybe if I had secured the material excess, so possibly suggesting maybe the technique will work. So the next one that we did then was doing the engraving on the color material and then putting the holographic material on top and then welding the two together. And this one, yeah. So this one fused completely around. There's no cracks, I can't get this one apart. So this works. So my guess would be doing any type of engraving on either material would probably work. And then putting the two together, you just might run the risk potentially of it not sealing all the way if the two pieces aren't completely flush together. I think the trick with this is making sure that when you're doing the acrylic welding, everything is flush together. I will say in looking at the two of these in terms of which one looks a little bit better, I think it's kind of hard to tell. I feel like both of the engravings could probably be about the same. It might be a little bit easier to see this one, but I think that's only because the color in the background is a bit darker. Another interesting thing I did note when doing this is that some areas it almost seems like there might be like some air bubbles that you can see in between, which is kind of an interesting thing. And you would expect that if you've got the two pieces pressed together and there's a little bit of space. Interestingly, the piece that didn't fuse all the way together doesn't seem to have any air bubbles which would make sense because everything probably was able to escape out. Whereas the one where it's sealed completely, I've got a little bit of air bubble here in the top that you can kind of see if I reflect it just right. A couple of things to keep in mind with. The next set out of experiments we did was the engraving again, but this time filling it with some paint. And this was just standard acrylic paint. The orange one was where we did the engraving on the holographic, the top piece with the paint fill. And this look wise turned out pretty good. I have some cracks showing in the design, I don't quite know what prompted that, if it was the way it was cut, maybe I need to adjust my settings or such, but you do get some lines that suggest some breakage. There's also a tiny bit of air bubble trap here in the corner. In terms of like fused, however, though, the welding with this one is spot on. I can't get these two apart. So filling the simple, you know, light paint fill on the design worked without seeming to affect the weld. The baby yellow was the same idea, only the paint was on the yellow portion rather than the clear holographic. This one to me looks pretty nice. Um, it didn't actually seem to have any bubbles and I feel like you can kind of see the design. Again, I think if I had a more contrasting paint color, it would probably look a little bit better, but it did not weld. So I'm not entirely sure why this didn't work because it, in theory, it should be the exact, you would think it would be the exact same because there's still, you know, a layer of paint in between. I wonder if, you know, there was just something up with the bonding on this one versus the other. It looked like there was sort of an attempt when I look at it where the area tried to weld, but for some reason, the yellow was a fit. So the next method that we explored was doing a resin fill instead of an acrylic paint fill. And I don't see this technique done as often. I have done this technique from time to time on acrylic and it can give a nice fill finish. It does 
the resin will bond pretty well to the engraved portion of the acrylic and then it's fairly easy cleanup. But in terms of welding, we had a fail with the green. It did not want to bond with that one. And then in terms of the spearmint one, which was the one where it was underneath, it also did not want to bond. So the resin fill with the acrylic welding does not seem to work at all. All right, so now let's get into the really interesting experimental territory. And that is, can we put a sticker of some form in between to try and seal something together? You're probably wondering, well, why would you want to do that? Well, my first thought came, of course, to some of these cool keychains. I did an example of a clear acrylic keychain a few weeks ago where it was just the clear acrylic on the bottom and then I did a resin coating on top because I just couldn't get a nice finish in between the two acrylic pieces using glue. I hadn't even known this technique existed before. So I was curious to see if perhaps this technique would work for you know securing a sticker or it didn't necessarily even need to be a sticker, it could just be a piece of paper. So the first one I did was doing a simple sticker inside with my paper sticker material. So like the online labels is kind of a common one you see on Amazon, but basically, you know, no laminate on top. It's not made of vinyl. It's, you know, a thin paper sticker, essentially not waterproof. I put that one in between and then weld wise. Okay. So I can't seem to get this one apart. Again, I have a section where there is a little bit of a hole, a little bit of a crack that aside that did not seal completely. So again, I'm thinking of back with the engraving where I wonder if like the material just wasn't completely, you know, pushed together to achieve that nice weld. And if perhaps going in and making sure that, you know, all the sides are taped together, if that would help a little bit. But it did seem to create a bond, but it did work with a sticker and it turned out pretty nice. I mean, the sticker looks pretty good underneath, especially against this colored background. So this is kind of a nice finish. It's with it being a quarter inch thick, I feel like it's really thick for like a keychain, but for one eighth inch acrylic, AKA three millimeter acrylic on both pieces, I was able to get a sticker in between. And then the last one I did was the same idea behind the sticker one, except this was just using standard copy paper. As you can see, it turned out pretty good. There is a section of it and it's hard to see on camera where the color seems off a little bit, almost as if something like residue or such from the acrylic got in. It's not super noticeable now that it's dry. It looked like an oil spot earlier on, but for the most part seems to have dried up, but it is a bit of an imperfection, but it did, but it did well together. So this did stay. So what have we learned from this? Well, it does appear that you can do this acrylic welding technique and secure a piece of paper or a thin sticker in between. What you didn't see in this test was testing thicker stickers like vinyl paper, but I can tell you that when I was playing around and setting up this video and doing tests prior to this set, I had tried it and it did not work. So if you are going to use the stickers, my suggestion would be to use like the thin paper online labels. And I think part of it also is making sure you have a decent enough border for this as well, because it allows for there to be enough room for the acrylic to get a good seal without having to interact with the paper in between. I also think making sure that you've got the pieces pressed together tightly will help. So my recommendations for this, if you wanted to do a project and you wanted to try and connect two pieces of acrylic, particularly if they were, you know, to make a sign or something and you wanted a clear layer and a colored layer in between, you can do this technique and it works really well. If you wanted to try and seal some type of engraving in between, you can do that. And if you wanted to enhance the engraving in between, you can do this with a paint fill. What appears not to work is if there is too much thickness in between. I think the real key to getting this to work is to make sure that the pieces are completely pressed together and you've got the two next to each other because ultimately what is happening when you're doing the welding is that the laser is cutting through both pieces at the same time and you've got that heat, that extreme heat. And this is acrylic and plastic. It's melting slightly as this is going on. And I will say doing this experiment, I noticed that the smell of from my laser, the melting acrylic smell that I sometimes get after cutting a lot definitely showed up earlier. So because you are getting more melting going on and that melting, that heat 
is enabling the pieces to fuse together a little bit. Another thing I did notice is that you probably want to give the pieces a little bit of time out of the machine, allow them to completely cool, let contacts stay together as much as possible before attempting to make sure they're sealed. When I was doing some pre-testing for all of this and I was doing a two pieces of clear acrylic, one had been engraved, cut the two pieces together. And when I pulled them out, it seemed like they weren't sticking together. And I had actually just set it down on my desk, you know, left it, came back later and found that they had actually completely bonded at that point. So making sure that you try not to disturb it, at least initially, I think will also play a bit of a role. Allowing that bond to completely solidify, I think is important as well. So I hope you guys found this information helpful. I certainly did. Now, a couple things to remember in terms of laser cutting settings is that every machine is going to be different. Even with mine, I had to play around a little bit with my settings to get things to look and feel completely right. And even then it's not perfect. It's pretty obvious with my engravings that I can see lines and I need to tweak settings a little bit more lately, but I didn't really wanna mess with it a whole lot. At this point, I kinda of wanted to get this video assembled for all of you guys. That being said, I can give you my initial settings here, but keep in mind, this worked for my machine, a Juhi Cloud 55 watt CO2 laser. This was what worked today during these conditions after being cleaned. And this number can vary from day to day on my machine, let alone other machines. You're gonna need to play around and test to find the right settings. So would you guys like to see more content like this? Would you like to kind of get a behind the scenes picture of what I'm working on? Well, as of today, I'm happy to announce that I've started a Discord. The Labcraft Studio Discord is going to be a place where you can find behind the scenes information on things I'm working on, as well as access to general information, tossing up questions if you're newbies. I wanted to create an environment where anyone new to this field can feel comfortable asking questions amongst the community, what settings work for you, how to do things, you know, what kind of projects we're working on. And I want the environment to feel beginner friendly. I understand that in an environment nowadays where we've got machines that are very turnkey, such as perhaps the bamboo set of printers, which I absolutely love. I do understand that I have a little bit of a leg up because I spent time playing with a machine that required learning a lot more nuances, concepts of bed leveling, how to deal with, you know, various errors. And that information isn't always something that beginners may pick up nowadays. And I want beginners to be able to feel comfortable asking the basics, asking these questions, or having a source where they can go to to potentially look up this information. I also have a secret area which will show more behind the scenes photos, can get more directed questions answered, as well as various other special things such as perhaps access to laser cut files or 3D print files that I show off in my videos. So if you just want to be part of the studio discord and have access to a growing community of makers like myself, feel free to sign up. The money for the subscriptions helps go to funding further experiments and keeping this channel alive. I really appreciate all of your guys' support these past few months as my channel has grown and I hope we can keep on growing. If you like content like this and want to see more of it, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell if you want to be notified when videos drop. In the meantime, I hope you guys have a good day. Bye!